Now we have to be quiet. Greetings. Welcome to Wednesday Night Fellowship. And right now we're going to have a word of <coughs> prayer. And uh, we'll hear from our Heavenly Father according to 1 Corinthians 14. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for, you know, March the 2nd. 2016. Uh, we praise you for your word and for all the people who got it to us and uh, actually let's keep providing for it. Thank you Christ, <coughs> Mashiach Yahushua, for giving your life for us and let me for us right now that you're our head, that we're your hands and your feet and your mouth and we, we thank our Father through you. Amen. And now whoever would like to speak in tongues, interpret or prophesy, Go ahead, but uh, explain what you're going to do first. Now, if you speak in tongues and interpret, the the tongue should be about as long as, you know, so sometimes we stop too soon on our tongues of interpretation. So speak in tongues until you, you feel led to stop, and then go ahead and interpret. All right, so Father, we thank you for these words through Christ our Lord. Amen. So if somebody wants to speak in tongues and interpret or prophesy, go ahead. I'm happy about I, I will speak in tongues and interpret. My, um, akumu haya mania maka akushi manenya tali se sai amu aneka mahama ne apahama ne hama nina ma eku aseno tonya mania aku. My children, there is a TV, and it has many plugs, and it needs all those plugs to work. If you just take one of those plugs away, the TV won't work. You need all of them working together. You need all of them, every single plug. You need it all hooked up right just the way it needs to be. So don't take one of those plugs away and replace it with a new plug. I want you to use those plugs that I give you. Those plugs that that I give you to make the TV work. I will prophesy. <coughs> I chose him. Here's a doorway. A doorway to me. And if you sin, like if you, you're about to go in the doorway, then sin, <laughs> someone accidentally chips you, don't punch him back. Because then the doorway disappear. I am Yo, and I wouldn't, and if you, and never sin, or else, because if you, because sin cannot be in heaven. Oh, uh, we gotta stop there. I don't think that was from Father, but that's right. And I'll speak in tongues and interpret. <coughs> well, Father, uh, we thank you for these words. Biatuma kuleana eati esatameatu, aliana eata kweati satameatu, iliana beata. As you put on my word and walk faithfully and obediently upon what commandments I have given you to fulfill, you shepherd your word above all your expectations. So put on my word, dwell on my word. Manifest my word, and most important, obey and put my word into action, and you shall bring uh, deliverance to the captive and set them free. I will prophesy. My children, don't be afraid. Um, every you will be afraid, but don't act. But don't be that afraid, because I am always with you. So don't be afraid and walk boldly because my children don't be embarrassed if you are a little scared because there is no brave without fear so be strong and don't listen to what other people say just walk right next to me and talk with me i will speak in tongues I can lift your head up a little wide and be uh, bold. I, I will speak in tongues and interpret. Kumati kalamiti kumati kambu mapa kalamiti nga moti kambu kamati peyamala bubu kumata. Do you know that sometimes you can be this like not as great at me, but you can try. You can be halfway as me. You can be great like me. And don't fail on that, because there's things that you see when when my son comes back. 
Hmm. And you have a lot of other things that you will love on the new world that we have for you. Amen. 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 Oh, a word of prophecy. My children, come to me and immerse yourself in, in the things that I have for you. And do not, do not just sprinkle yourselves or, or weakly uh, get, un, get into or immerse yourself, but fully immerse yourself into the things that I have of you. As, as sea creatures or, or water creatures are at home in their, in their environment, and, and you are not. The environment that you have now is not the environment I want you in. That there's, there's something else. You are a new creation. You are a new creature. And I call for you to be immersed in this new creation, in the things that I've given, which is outside of this world. I'll give a word of prophecy. Do not be fearful, but instead resist fear, resist temptations. And, f and the adversary will flee from you. But hold fast to me and make a decision. Make a decision each day to choose who will you fight for. Many times uh, you get distracted because you're not making a conclusion and you think that, that you can just remain neutral when it comes to the old man and the new man, which is not possible. There, there is no truce with the old man and the new man. The two of them war every day. But it is up to you to make a conscious decision to say who is going to win this war today. If you do so, all of your life will be all your life will become more fluid. Everything will move a lot better, and, and also the peace the peace that you always you value will, will be expanded so that not only will your <coughs> peace be sustained, but many people will start flocking around you to also receive that peace, and then encourage them to don't stand on the, because there is no standing on the sidelines. That's what the adversary, what liars say. But choose to engage and choose to win each morning. Know that I see you, I see you closely, and I see your hearts, each one of you. Don't be afraid to teach one another because life is about change. As long as you're learning my word, you will see great change in your lives. Don't be afraid of that change because it makes you stronger. You become closer and closer to the creations that I would have you be. Know that as you teach your children, I am teaching you. I would have you walk as carefully and as closely to my presence as you can. Amen, Father. Thank you for those words. Thank you, Christ. Through you we come to the Father. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Today we'll, sharing will be upon the two kings, King David and King Yahushua. I know that guy. <laughs> Say hello there, stranger. You go to 2 Samuel. Let's look at King David. This is really a, a foundational teaching that every, every uh, Christian should have. And, and what we have to find out, once we do this study, we're going to see how far off Christianity is. And it's actually not even very, very <coughs> rarely close to what the word of Yahweh actually says. So 2 Samuel chapter 7, page 328. You want a Bible, Isaiah? There's one right there. There's Sharon. I know, but you can have your own. If we look at David, or David, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 4. We look at David, and that's how you pronounce the name correctly. He's just all the way through. I don't know if his name, anybody else's name is used in the proportion that he has. So this guy's a very special guy. And so we're going to look at his, uh, the prophecy that Shiach, or the Messiah, is going to come through him. And so David is the type <coughs> of Christ. And what we're going to find out, this is usually at the end of the teaching, but I'm going to show you how wrong Christianity is. We're going to find out in here, for the believers, there is no heaven and no hell. Never has been. The meek shall not inherit heaven. Right? Absent from the body, present with the Lord has nothing to do with, with uh, dying. Death is not a portal to heaven. Man lives on without his body is alive. No mortals in heaven. 
Christians know very little of anything about a thousand year reign on earth. So according to Christianity, nothing happens on earth. They missed it all. I mean, they just missed it all. Uh, they don't know of a place where there's an adversary present. Uh, obviously, no triune God, but there is a Yahweh. So Christians have a triune God, but no Yahweh. Uh, babies are not in heaven when they die. Uh, there's, so there's a total disregard for what's written here, as we're going to see. And it's just a foundation. It's just all over the place that David was a king to rule Israel. And why we say Israel is very important because the E-L means God, but the mighty God. And so it's not Joel, it's Joel, and that's E-L. And so all these names that have an E-L on the end, you must separate it because that distinguishes L. So it's Israel, three syllables, not Israel. So it has nothing to do with real. It is Israel, which is the prince of L. That's what it comes down to. Uh, so we have a total disregard of what is written in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And so you wonder where Christianity, well, it's not wondering. It's foundational that the distortion of Scripture has always been that way. So we know in Galatians that while Paul's alive, they've already deviated. And he says, who has bewitched you? You've already come up with a new doctrine. What's it been, 24 hours? It's like, wrote this thing, and you're already off on the track, so it should never be a shock that there's error. It should be a shock that nobody knows what the errors are. Because we've got 2,000 years to 6,000 years of, of adversarial deviation. Work. Yeah, deviation from Scripture. And we're going to see this stuff. It's beautiful, but actually nobody even knows about it. In the Christian world, it doesn't even exist to their loss. So here's the promise with Yahweh. This is great. Verse 4 and 5, But so it was in the night that the word of Yahweh came unto Nathan, saying, Go and say unto my servant unto David. Or David. So this is Yahweh approaching, because Yah David wanted to build a house for Yahweh. Now we go to verse 12, And it shall be, when thy day shall be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep, well, With thy and thou shalt go to heaven, nope. with thy fathers, no, then will I raise up thy seed after thee, which proceeded from thy own body. That's the Messiah. And so is Christ a man? Absolutely a man. Is it an incarnation? No. Absolutely not. I just think, start thinking about this, and this is a good example of how perverted it is. And so people use pre-incarnate, and that's before Christ or God became carnate. And then he became incarnate, Yah, so Yahweh went into the womb of Mary, and that's called incarnate. And then he became excarnate. What, what, when would that happen? At birth. birth. Now, excarnate means died. no flesh. Oh. When he died. Mm -hmm. So you have, carnate means flesh. So oh. incarnate, pre-incarnate, before he became flesh. Incarnate means became flesh. And we know he died, right? And they're going to say he's in heaven or hell, flying around doing stuff, right? So that had to be excarnate. And, and then when he came back to his body, what was that called? Reincarnate. Reincarnate. Reincarnation. Well, no, we can't say that. This is what you say. This is the whole teaching. You're just not going to use those words. Because man in a spirit body goes in different places and the body has no place, and that's called reincarnation. Very simple. And excarnate. <coughs> but no, Christ is a man. He was born of the virgin. He was also son of Yahweh, by the seed of Yahweh, with no father. 13. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish his kingly throne unto times age of body. So who's going to build a house? The seed of David. And so there's going to be two. We know Solomon did, and that temple got destroyed. And we know another Messiah is going to build, rebuild the temple. It wasn't Herod. It's going to be... Yahushua. Establish his kingly throne unto time's age abide him. I will become his father, and he shall become my son. If he commit iniquity, then will I correct him with the rod of men and with the, stir the stripes of the son of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him, as I cause it to depart from Saul, 
whom I caused to depart from before thee, so shall thy house and thy kingdom be made steadfast unto times, age, and body before thee. Thy throne shall be established unto times, age, and body. Wow, what a compliment to David. Yeah. That the Messiah, I'm so pleased with you, that the Messiah is going to come, and actually I'm going to call him David in the prophecies, which we're going to see. Uh, let's see here. So he's going to build a house. <coughs> Go to First Chronicles 29, which is page 436. <clears throat> Just beautiful stuff. <clears throat> now where is this kingdom? On earth. Now why do we have Christ in heaven? And everybody's in heaven with his kingdom. And we, we think about another thing too is, you know, another uh, people say is God or Yahweh is sovereign, which means he, he, he controls everything. Well then, the prayer makes no sense. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, no, if he was sovereign, his, work, his will is done on earth as it is in heaven. No, yeah, absolutely not sovereign whatsoever. In, in heaven, he is ruling. In earth, he is not. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this kind of chaos and rebellion against him. So, very simple. And that was the prayer, thy will be done on he in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven is fine. Earth is a big problem. Uh, 1 Chronicles 29, 23. I say 436. So Solomon took his seat upon the throne of Yahweh as king. Isn't that cool? The throne of who? Yahweh. Yahweh as king. Instead of David or David his father, and prospered in all Israel hearkened unto him. So Yahushua was going to also sit on the throne of Yahweh, which is also called the throne of David. Go to Luke 1, 31. Page 56. We're going to go into a lot of scriptures. I think I can get them all done in time. And lo, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahushua. The same, and here's one thing people can realize. The Greek text has... You know, it's not in its fullness of the word of Yahweh. And how we can say that is in the Greek text, there's no Elijah, there's an Elijah. There's no Jeremiah, it's Jeremiah's. And you go all the way, and that's all in the old King James. You can see it because they kept it the way the Greek, the Greek pronunciation is. But everybody knows it's not Elias, it's, it's Elijah. <coughs> And so the same way here when it says Jesus, which is really Iesus, it's actually Yahushua. Because he had the same name as Joshua, and Joshua was also called Jesus. You know, Iesus, and that's in Acts and in Hebrews. So we know his name is his name is a Hebrew name, not a Greek name. So Iesus is a Greek name. The same shall be great, and son of the most high shall be called. And the Yahweh Elohim will give unto him the throne of who? David, his father. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob. Where is he going to reign over the house of Jacob? Not in heaven, but on earth. Unto the ages and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Go to Isaiah chapter 9, page 656. So we're going to look at all the references to the throne of David, which is the throne of Yahushua. So David and Solomon serve a great purpose. And so David was the warrior. Solomon means what? Peace. peace. He had 40 years of peace. David had 40 years of war. And so the same two characters of Yahushua. He's a, he's, a, he's a warrior and also peace. A lion and a lamb. Yes, a lion and a lamb. You're right. So in verse 6, chapter 9, verse 6, For a child has been born to us, a son has been given to us, and the dominion is upon his shoulder, 
and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty El, Father of Futurity, Prince of Prosperity, of the increase of dominion and of prosperity. There shall be no end. Upon what? The throne, the of, David. throne of David. And upon his kingdom, <coughs> be, by establishing it and by sustaining it with justice and with righteousness from henceforth, even unto time, age of body. The jealousy of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. Upon David's throne. And now we go into King Yahushua. So we see all this laid out to David. And, and the prophecy of, of, of fulfilling uh, Yahweh's purpose of ruling the earth through his son Yahushua. Through the line of David. Which is also through the line of Abraham. And so remember Ab, A-B means what? Father. Father. So, Abraham is a father of a multitude. Go to Psalms 2, verse 1. And we're going to see, and that's page 529. And Wendy, why don't you read that psalm? I'd love to. 1 through 12. How happy the man who hath not walked in the counsel of the lawless, and in the way of sinners hath not stood. In the seat of scoffers hath not sat, but in the law of Yahweh is his delight. No, I'm sorry, uh, Psalm 2. Oh. Psalm 2, verses 1 through 12. I mean, it's a whole psalm. Wherefore have nations assembled in tumult? Or should peoples mutter an empty thing? The kings of earth shall take their station, and grave men have met by appointment together against Yahweh, and against his anointed one, saying, Let us break asunder their bonds, and cast from us their cords. He that sitteth in the heavens will laugh, my Lord will mock at them. Then will he speak unto them in his anger, and in his wrath confound them. Yet I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. So there we go right here. So. Is Zion, it's a holy mountain, it's a place that exists today. Zion. And it, but yeah. But keep reading. Verse 7. Let me tell of a decree. Yahweh hath said unto me, My son thou art, I today have begotten thee. Ask of me and let me give nations as thine inheritance, and as thy possession the ends of the earth. Thou shalt shepherd them with a scepter of iron. Now wait a minute here. Why would I be shepherding people in heaven with a shepherd of iron and, and breaking Scepter the heads? Because we're going to find out it has nothing to do with heaven. There's going to be a kingdom, and it's, it's Christ <clears throat> as king, thousand year millennium. Thousand, that's redundancy. Thousand years means millennium. It's <coughs> going to be headquarters where? In Zion, on the mountain. <laughs> There's going to be believers there, the resurrected, which would be us. There's going to, I mean, we're going to, we're going to be there. Uh, the, uh, the resurrection of justice happened. They're going to be there. So that's Abraham and Noah and all of them. But there's going to be mortal men there. The people who did not die in, in the book of Revelation. And so on this thousand years reign, there's going to be discipline. There's going to be punishment. There's going to be, and people don't even talk about this world. You know, to, to the Christians today, this world doesn't exist. <clears throat> so there's mortals mixed in with the immortals. And that's where the cracking of the heads come down. And we're going to see a lot of stuff dealing with the mortals. And how do you, there's going to be death there. People are going to live and die. And as we see in the prophecy, if you're, if you're a child and live to be 100 years, you're going to be cursed. So people are going to live like a tree. They're going to be two or three hundred years old. That, that's how it's going to be. Um, this has nothing to do with heaven. This is planet Earth, and, and Yahushua is sitting on his throne, cracking heads, and we're going to see there's festivals, there are feast days, they come back, uh, and to the Christian Christendom, this doesn't even exist. And so they've missed the whole picture. So now we go to, well, verse 9, read 9 through 12. Thou shalt shepherd them with a scepter of iron, as a potter's vessel shalt thou dash them in pieces. Now, 
Therefore, ye kings, show your prudence. Be admonished, ye judges of earth. Serve Yahweh with reverence and exult with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish by the way. For soon might be kindled his anger. How happy are all who seek refuge in him. Great. Now we go to Psalms 110. That keeps establishing this kingship of David. And why is a thousand, what's the purpose of a thousand years? Uh, you know, it's so simple. It really is. People have babies who die or are aborted. They end up in heaven. You know, we saw that on Left Behind. You have children on the plane. When Christ comes back, their clothes are empty. That's not scriptural at all. There's no such thing. Very simple. They never got to choose. You know, so all of life is based upon choice. Do you want to go, do you want to live with Christ? Do you want to bow to Christ? Do you want to bow to Yahweh and serve Him? Or do you re want to rebel? And so everybody gets to choose. So the thousand year reign is still a period of time where people are doing what? Sure. Choosing. Now the immortals have already done what? Sure. They chose. They've already chosen. And they're immortal. But these, these you know, these uh, roughens, Ruffians. Ruffians. And we're going to be down there probably, you know, running things and disciplining people and getting them to go to church and going to different places and, and get up to that festival. You won't get any rain. All right, so we're going to have a good job down there. Uh, but here's uh, yeah, one here. tenth. Yeah, on earth, yeah. So you're, what you're saying is that the babies that premature death will have a chance to possibly... Yeah, and so in my best estimation, all the people who did not have a chance to choose. They died too early. You know, perfect place for them to be is to be resurrected in this particular deal. They, they grow up, they get to choose. You never got to choose, now you get to choose. They live their life, what a perfect That's place just, to put. Yeah, now, just. you're in a place where there's no what? Adversary. Adversary. How beautiful is that? You have no adversary for a thousand years. Get up there and get to meet the... And that's why the sacrifices, people are still sacrificing to Yahweh because Yahushua was on the earth in Zion running the temple, which we're going to see, but Yahweh is not on the earth. And where the festival is going to, it's, it's not to appease, not for our sake, because we've already been cleansed, but it's for these people who are going to give sacrifices to Yahweh for their sins and everything else we can see because there's a, it's just another chapter mm -hmm. to be going on and for these people and so it doesn't say that but I thought this is a perfect place for those people to go now chapter or, or Psalms 110 the declaration of Yahweh to my Lord sit that at my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool the strength of the scepter of strength will Yahweh extend out of where Zion, and it's not Zion, it's actually pronounced Z O, like zebra. Tread thou down in the midst of thy foes, thy people will freely offer themselves in the day of thy army, in the splendor of holiness out of the womb of the dawn, to thee shall spring forth the dew of thy youth. Yahweh has sworn and will not repent, thou shall be a priest under times age abiding after the manner of Michal's dick. So we see that, and here's, here's the correlation right with this, as we go to Psalms, I mean Revelation chapter 19, page 265, 11 through 16, and here is King Yahushua coming to the earth. He's not king now. If he was king, you know, we wouldn't have Hillary Clinton around and we wouldn't have Obama around. They'd be put to death. And that's this wickedness there would be if he was king. Yeah. So we're going to look at, and so here's the middle of the book. We saw the beginning of the book. Here's the middle of the book. Here's the end of the book. Now, how could people miss this? Uh, 11 through 16. And I saw heaven set open, and lo, a white horse, and he that was sitting thereon called faithful and true, and in righteousness does he judge and make war. And his eyes are a flame of fire, and upon his head 
or many diadems, having a name written which no one knoweth but himself, and arrayed with a mantle, sprinkled with blood, and his name shall be called the word of Yahweh. And the armies which were in heaven were following him upon white horses clothed with fine linen, white, pure, and out of his mouth is going forth a sharp sword, that wherewith he may smite the nations, and he shall shepherd them with a scepter of iron, and he shall tread, you know, which we know that's Psalms 2, uh, and, uh, and, and he shall tread the winepress of the wrath of the anger of Yahweh of hosts, and hath upon his mantle, upon his thigh, a name written, King of King and Lord of Lords. So this is the whole story, folks. He's coming back, and we're, we're going to see later on in chapter 20. He's back on earth. It's like, I'm back. And let's, let's, we're going to put this place in order the way it was supposed to be in the first place. But we still have people on probation. They get to choose, are you, are you rehabilitated or are you not rehabilitated? Are you going to be rehabilitated or are you going to rebel? And how do we know that some of them rebel? Because in chapter 20, they do. As the sand of the sea come against somebody who is perfect. We won't go there, though. Let's go to Jeremiah 23, page 739. Going back to David. We're going to learn about, and the Jews really know this, it's called Simak, the bud. This is the prophecy of the Simak. Okay. Uh, 739. <clears throat> Jeremiah 23, verse 5 and 6. 23, 5 through 6. There I am. Lo, days are coming, declared Yahweh, when I will raise up to who? David. David, a righteous Simak, or bud. And he shall reign as what? King. Mm. So you see, everything, David's kingship, Yahushua's kingship, and prosper, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land, and in his days shall Judah be saved, and Israel abides securely, and this in his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. Amen. He is, right now he's called Yahweh our salvation. Yahushua is Yahweh our, or Yah is our salvation. Now he's going to be called Yahweh is our righteousness. Jeremiah 33, Simak. If you wonder what righteousness is in Hebrew. Yeah. Actually, is bud? No, it's salvation. Pardon me? is bud? Yeah, or another thing will say branch. It's a sprout. But we know in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's all the sea mock is the man, <coughs> the sea mock is the king, <coughs> the sea mock is the servant, and the sea mock is the bud or the sea mock of Yahweh. So those are the four Gospels. 33, 14, verse through 16. Lo, days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I establish my good word which I have spoken as to the house of Israel and concerning the house of Judah. In those days and at that time will I cause to bud unto D D David or David a bud of, or a sea mock of righteousness. See, he's got a note there, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And in those days Judah shall be saved, and Jerusalem abide secure. So you see this? This is Jerusalem, the physical Jerusalem, you know. Judah, the physical land. You know, land's all plotted out, everything else, but Christian, Christendom has everything from false prophets. You know, Jesse Duplantis is one of them. They have a whole society and kingdom of houses and everything else all in heaven, and people are living there right now. Which is, which is demonic, which is uh, doctrines of demons, which is also, you shall be accursed, because you added to the word. 
Uh, we got that. So 16. Okay. Now we go to Hosea. That's 8.62. And Moana, you can read that. Did you just quit? Okay, I guess you won't read that. Come on, follow. That's why I got the page. Don't put the blanket on. It's not cold. Chapter 3, verses 4 through 5. You want to read it, Elijah? Okay. For many days shall the son of Israel tarry without king and without ruler and without sacrifice and without pillar and without ephod or household gods. Afterwards shall the sons of Israel return and seek Yahweh their Elohim and David their king and shall turn with throbbing hearts unto Yahweh and unto his goodness in the after part of the days. Oh, let me ask you something. When Hosea wrote this, was David dead? Yeah. Yeah. So what does it say right here in verse 5? Afterwards shall the sons of Israel, remember Israel, three syllables, Return and seek Yahweh their Elohim and who? David. David their king. Well, who's, that can't be the David because he's still dead. All right. So now there's a figure of speech that one, I forget the three different figures of speech. One is he is like David. And, yeah, there's a simile, metaphor. And, 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 what's that called? Hypocanastasis. Hypocanastasis. One is he is like David. Another one says, uh, he is David. And I think the third one just says David. And so when, when we call the adversary the serpent, all right, then that is a figure of speech. So the, Yahushua is being called David. <coughs> in these particular, it's all the way through here. Go to Jeremiah 30. Page 748. Verse 7 through 9. Who did you say? Jeremiah what? 30. Chapter 30, verses 7 through 9. Page 748. Alas! And so when you guys read this, look at the Look at the exclamation marks. Emphasis. And so you're looking at emphasis, mm -hmm. and you slow down, and you start seeing patterns. Mm -hmm. And so instead of just bur bursting out, kind of slow down and read this stuff with emphasis. Okay, Melania, can you do that for me? Yeah. Seven through nine. Alas, for great is that day, so that none is like it. Now let me stop here for a minute. For the kids' sake, Double brackets around a word means what, Elijah? You see how double brackets around great? That's heavily emphasized. Mm -hmm. And so heavily emphasized, I can heavily emphasize a word in two ways. One, I can raise my voice and say, alas, for great is the day. Or I can say, alas, for, and then I pause, great is the day. So you can emphasize it two ways, but that's how Yahweh wrote it. Okay, start over, Melania. And so when you look at these little dashes, double brackets means heavily emphasized. Single brackets is lightly emphasized. Not as much emphasis. So start at the seven again. Alas, for great is that day, so that none is like it. Yea, a time of... Anguish. Anguish is... I mean, it is for Jacob, but Come on. Out, out of it shall be, he, I be mean, saved. he be saved, and it shall come to pass in that day, declares Yahweh of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and thy bonds will I tear off, and for foreigners shall use him as a slave no more. But they shall serve Yahweh their Elohim. God, I mean Elohim, and David their king, whom I will raise 
up unto them. There we go. We'll stop there. But there's David thy king again. So it's Yahweh and David. It's always been that. <coughs> Every, you know, the triune God is just blasphemy. Every epistle, greetings from two entities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, I mean, it's just so simple. It's all the way through here. Now, we go to King Yahushua. So now we get into Ezekiel. And this is King Yahushua. Ezekiel, page 825, Ezekiel 34. So Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Or Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. Now we start getting a picture, and what's so nice about it is there's a lot of uh, things that are not quite clear. So we have to say, how is that going to work? I don't quite see that. Yeah, but we, we see the connection. So Bollinger says when it says David or the prince, it has to be literally David or it's the Messiah. You know, so it could literally be the David, but I don't think there's any way it could be the David because you know, where's the Messiah? He's not even present. We're going to see that. Uh, so, yeah, 34 verses 1 through 2. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy, and thou shalt say unto them, even to the shepherds, Thus saith my Lord Yahweh, Alas, for the shepherds of Israel who have been tending themselves, is it not the flock that the shepherds should tend? Boy, is that a, a rebuke to our pastors today. The, per, the word pastor is actually the word a shepherd. <clears throat> and so many times they won't make a stand politically because of probably financial contributions could be affected. And so that is, uh, you know, uh, woe to you guys. Now, but this is, our, this is our chapter we're talking about. We're talking about the shepherds. They're in trouble. Now we go to uh, verse 20 to 24. Therefore, thus saith my Lord Yahweh unto them, Here am I myself. Therefore will I judge between fat sheep and lean sheep, because with the side and with the shoulder do you thrust, and with your horns you do push all the sick until you have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I bring salvation to my flock, and they shall be no longer a prey. But I will judge between one sheep and another, and I will raise up over them one shepherd, and he shall tend them, even my, what? Servant David. Servant David. So here we go right back to the, the shepherd. He will tend them, and he will become to them a shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will become to them uh, Elohim. My servant David, being a prince in their midst, I, Yahweh, have spoken. Yeah, let's see. So we we'll stop, uh, yeah, 24. Now we go to chapter 37, verse 21. You want to read that, Elijah? So that would be uh, 21 through, well, 21 to uh, 28. And if you get tired, we'll stop and let somebody else read. Okay. Therefore speak thou unto them, Thus saith my Lord Yahweh, Lo, I myself am going to take the sons of Israel from among the nations whither they have gone, and I will gather them from each every side and will bring them in upon their own so soil and will make of them one nation in the land among the mountains of Israel. Where, where's this happening? The planet Earth. Earth. Clouds. Somewhere. Yeah, planet Earth. <laughs> okay, keep going. And one king. And one king shall they all have for king, and they shall remain no longer two nations, nor shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their manufactured God Elohim or with their dis. Detestable, thing, detestable things, or with any of their tr transgressions, but I will place, will save them out of all their dwelling, their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse, 
clean is it clean? Cleanse. Cleanse them, and they shall become my people, and I will become their Elohim. My servant David shall be king over them, and one shepherd shall they all have. <coughs> In my regulations shall they walk, in my statutes shall they observe and do them. And they shall dwell upon the land which I gave to my servant, to Jacob, wherein your fathers dwelt, yea, they shall dwell thereupon, they and their children, and their children's children, into times age abiding. And my ser David, my servant, shall be prince unto them, unto times age abiding, and I will solemnize to them a covenant of prosperity, a covenant age abiding shall be with them, and I will place them, and multiply them, and set my sanctuary in the midst of them, unto times age abiding, and my habitation shall be over them, and I will become their Elohim, and they shall become my people, so shall the nations know that I, Yahweh, am, am hallowing Israel when my sanctuary is in the midst of them unto time's age abiding. Isn't that great? But there's my servant David still running things. Now we go to... <coughs> 37. We go into what they call the Davidic Prince. Go to Zechariah 6. That's page 905. You see the prophecy about the Messiah rebuilding the temple. And this is what Ezekiel is all about. From Ezekiel 40 to 48 is all about the new Jerusalem building the temple. Zechariah chapter 6. And, that, and that's kind of symbolic also when they said, Lord, look at this temple. And he says, you know, uh, in, th yeah, in three days you know, I, I will rebuild it. And so that's symbolic too of him rebuilding the temple. Uh, Zechariah 6, verses 12 through 13. Then shalt thou speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Lo, a man, but is his name, or Shemar his name, and out of his own place shall he bud forth, and shall do what? Build the temple of Yahweh. Build the temple of Yahweh. And he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the honor, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall become a priest unto, upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between the two of them. There it is. And so we go now to Ezekiel 4, back to Ezekiel chapter 44. <laughs> Page. Uh, three, 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 thirty-eight. Three, eight. Eight, three, eight. Verses one through three. You think you can do that, Isaiah? What? One through three. Yeah. Okay, give him the Bible. Here. Let him. Yeah. Let him put him on his lap so you're not reading sideways. 44, 1 through 3. Got it, honey. Okay. Then he brought me back toward the oh, outer outer gate of the sanctuary. sanctuary, which looked toward the east, east, but it was shut. Then said Yah unto me, This gate shut shall remain, and it shall not be opened. And no man shall enter he thereby, because Yahweh God, Elohim of Israel, doth enter thereby. Therefore shall it remain shut. The prince, as prince, he shall sit therein to eat food before Yahweh. But why of the porch of the gates shall he go in? And but the way therefore shall he come out. Very good. So you see two things here. Yahweh is coming in to this temple. He comes in from the east, and we find out the temple of Yahweh, if you look at that, 
it, the, well, if you open up the temple where the priests go, it's facing east. And why that's important, Aaron said, Bollinger pointed that out, because when people bow, they're, they're, they're not bowing toward the sun. Their back's toward the sun. Their back is toward the sun. So most people, when they're going to bow or worship God, they're going to do it at the rising of the sun. And they're going to be facing the sun. So this way they go just the opposite. And they're facing the east. But Yahweh is going to come in. There's going to be a gate that he's the only one that comes in through. But we, we keep, now we learn about the prince. And now he's going to be called the prince. And the prince can stay there. And the prince is going to have certain land. Who he's going to be called the prince? Uh, Yahushua. Or David. And so we know the king is called David. And he was called the prince. And now we're going to see the prince, the prince, the prince all the way through these chapters of Ezekiel. 45 verse 17. But on the prince himself shall rest the ascending sacrifices and the meal offering and the drink offering on the festivals and on the new moon and on the Sabbath. Well, this is right back to the Mosaic Law. And if the prince is going to be involved in that. So we're looking at Sabbaths, new moons, festivals, three festivals, festival of booths. We're going right back to it because I believe the mortals, this is very important for the mortals to make this part of their life, and they have no options. Now we go to 46 verse uh, 4, and we're going to keep seeing the prince, the prince, the prince is the emphasis. 46, and the ascending sacrifice which the prince shall bring near unto Yahweh shall be on the Sabbath day, six he lambs, without defect and a ram without defect. So the prince is bringing these sacrifices unto Yahweh, which Yahweh comes in through the east gate. But that confuses people because they're like, well, why? Christ was the perfect sacrifice, so why is all this sacrificing? And you're killing animals, so the good news is he. It's <laughs> honey. <laughs> meat. Yeah, honey. You know, we so, all know we to eat meat. Yeah, for a thousand years, Snakes. we're going to have that. Hmm. I think we're always going to be eating it. And that's interesting. No, too. Yeah, but I mean, even though the tree of life, men were designed to eat. Even in Revelations 22, it's talking about eating the leaves from the trees for healing. Yeah, I just said eat meat. Well, I know, but people have us in heaven. <laughs> people have, have us in heaven not eating uh, anything. Not working or doing anything. Yeah, yeah. Not really, it just it becomes, uh, you know. And this is, what is this? <coughs> this, this is a surreal world that they have created. So they have made this world with their hands. The triune God, mm -hmm. people being in heaven. Uh, the going whole, to hell. Yeah, going to hell. It, it's just a, a world that's been created by the hands of men. No different than Baal. No different right. than Aaron making a god. Pharaoh's. No different than a Jeroboam making two golden calves. Same thing. Why mm -hmm. should we be surprised? Because the masses do it, doesn't doesn't condone it. Right. Yeah. You know, all of Israel went after Baal. I mean, where was that? That was four. Let's go to forty-seven. Well, let's. Yeah, I guess we go to 47 verse 1. And they're, they're, they're going in about the prince. We're kind of running out of time. But this is a really cool place. So 47 verse 1 is the temple. And this is how we know it faces the east. Then he brought me back into the entrance of the house, and lo, water is coming forth from under the threshold of the house eastward, because the front of the house was to the what? East. East. So that's why we know the temple is facing east. And the waters were coming down from beneath, from the right side of the house, on the south of the altar. So I'll just tell you exactly where it's coming. And then you see this whole thing about water, which is actually living water, again, because wherever they go, it brings forth life. It's going to go into the Dead Sea and, and provide life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the Dead Sea is dead now. And it's going to be a, a raging torrent. It starts off as a trickle, and as they get down to it, now we go to Revelations 22, 1, same river. And this is why many people didn't like the book of Revelation, because it was too Hebrew. And that's right, it is Hebrew. The new heaven and earth is going to be Hebrew. And in the New Jerusalem, 22, verse 1. But then it's okay, uh, Esther, you want to read this? 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
starting? Right here, honey. We're making and, this. And, and speak boldly. <coughs> and he pointed, pointed out to me a wee river. river of water of life bright as crystal. It's leaning forth out of the throne of God and of the lame lamb. Very lamb. good. Stop right there. Very good. There, there's a coordination. It goes right back to the river. Got right back on top. Wonderful place. Christendom doesn't even, doesn't even exist. Right. And what? People don't read the Old Testament. If they do, it doesn't matter. They read the Revelation. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a sad, sad state. But our job is to teach it anyway, to preach it anyway, and I think the best way you can get people's attention many times is to say, yeah, the meek shall inherit heaven. And every Christian will go, no, no, the meek shall inherit the earth. Oh. And I love yeah. what John Shane and I did down uh, New Heaven, New Earth, and you're like, well, yeah. And they start rearranging to say, what do you believe? I mean, it's ridiculous in what you believe. I just talked to a pastor and was trying to go with with hell, what what Hebrew word is is yeah, you say when you say hell, you know? So let's Wait, go ahead like, and stop. They said about the, about the cross, they know a, a sign about Jesus Christ's cross says, "Here is uh, Jesus, the King of the Greeks." Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's King of the Greeks, right? Yeah. No, here's the King of the Jews. Yeah. And now David was so Hebrew. exalted that here is the next David that you actually called him that. I thought, wow. What flattery to David. So, when James and John say, can we sit on your left and right hand side? You know, I'm probably going to be... <laughs> probably David. It's probably going to be David, David, and Moses. And then you guys be right there. Too. <coughs> you did great things. But those guys are really they special. your son after you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they went 40 years strong. Okay, we'll go ahead and end. And so I have a closing word of prayer. Thanks, you guys, for viewing. And then we'll hear from our Father for you, according to 1 Corinthians 14. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words, and we thank you that we can just look at your word and disregard the traditions of men. Thank you for the great picture that's just laid out before us. It's so simple. You know, I don't like people complicated things. You die, you, you go to sleep. And then when you're awakened, uh, you gotta, you're going to be immortal. We'll have a body just like as Christ created his body. It's such a simple situation. So we thank you for great freedom in your work, and your word sets us free, and uh, doctrines of men only bind us. Amen. And so we thank you for these words, according to 1 Corinthians 14. As you put on my words and speak my words and meditate upon my words, do not set them off to the left or to the right hand, but put them forefront into your vision that you can meditate and, and memorize those and make them a part of your life. Just not listening to them, but actually acting upon them and humming them and singing them and putting them into action so you can see the deliverance that light brings to this dark generation. Amen. Amen. See you next week, guys. Bye.